morning. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, today's Thursday musings, just a little precursor. I should set another um, live for this evening at seven o'clock, although I've got a headache. I've taken the headache tablets, hoping that they're going to take it away. I might go and get my head down uh, for a couple of hours. But um, a couple of bra uh, breaking news stories. Um, two brothers have been found not guilty of murder of Christopher Malloy, the 55-year-old security guard. A 15-year-old has been found guilty and stormed out of the dock. All three of them have pleaded guilty earlier on to manslaughter. We now have a guilty verdict on a 15-year-old for murder. And um, we've also got uh, the news came out that the 22-year-old that was arrested um, on the Camden shooting at Euston outside the church has been bailed. So arrested and bailed. We saw the dramatic scenes when the 22-year-old was arrested with armed police surrounding the, the car, boxing it in, getting the suspect on the floor, their guns pointed. Well, they've been bailed. I mean, it's amazing, really. And there really is. I know that um, a lot of my normal sense, my default position is more liberal. But, you know, in this instance, I believe that we definitely need <clears throat> a domestic terrorism organised crime act where people that are arrested for organised crimes groups and county lines things and money laundering and that they can be held under the domestic terrorism and organized crime act a bit like the rico act in america and they can be held for 28 days because honestly it's got beyond a joke people are arrested over the most serious crimes imaginable and they have to be either released, charged or bailed within 24 or 60 hours. They get two, three days, you know, they get a day, 24 hours, can go then for another extension of 36 hours. And then all of a sudden we're now seeing people that are being arrested on very, very, very serious crimes are being bailed. Now, I understand that, but the perception is to the public that people are being released and nothing's being done. And I know that's not the case, but again, it's the optics. It's a um, perception. And in a climate where the public have completely, right, okay, there's no, um, there's no um, two ways about it. The public have lost trust in the police and the police themselves have lost trust in themselves to be able to effectively do their job. Now, obviously, a range of reasons, funding, lack of support from the government and other things, and financial things as well, which leaves them open even more to corruption. But there are some ways that you can legislate which can actually send a message that if you're involved in organised crime and you're arrested, you have the possibility of being held for 28 days. Because what that would do would take some of the sting out of town. Now, if after 28 days you haven't got, there ain't enough evidence and they get bailed then, at least it's got those people off the street initially for 28 days. And again, even if it's done for the optics, for the uh, PR and practically getting people off the street for a period of time. Okay, that's why I believe that it's an attractive thing that should be done. And it's something that politicians can do. And to be honest, we've got a Home Secretary, Suala Braverman, Suella Braverman, who is right wing or right leaning. And so this should really be right up her street creating a domestic terrorism organised crime bill. And what it means is transferring all the 
legislation applied to terrorism over to a new domestic terrorism and organized crime act so all the um investigation tools that are used in anti-terrorism investigations can be used in domestic terrorism investigations and i think it's worth bearing in mind and i know that a lot of people with civil liberties won't like it and all that carry on i mean but what else are we gonna do the country's coming apart at the seams okay it's coming apart at the seams anyway because crime's rising and it's at an all-time high in many areas okay and we get and it's going to get worse as the financial situation gets worse those who are meant to police this and investigate this okay right a bit um have had their funding cut 40 percent since 2010 on merseyside they've lost 400 police officers from 2010 figures to today and corruption, okay, is right through the UK police force, okay, right, police officers with criminal convictions and who are totally unsuitable for the job have been recruited in the last 20 years. We see in many, many cases, right, of domestic violence, sexual cases, and very serious cases against serving police officers, and we're going to start seeing more going forward. Well, in order to do something, we need, you know, there are things that we can do or politicians can do, right, to ease the situation. And for example, the 22 year old arrested on suspicion of attempted murder on the shooting at the um, funeral in, uh, in Camden by Euston Station the other Saturday was arrested held for two days and then bailed and that don't look very good does it it don't ease the mind of the public thinking that someone's got the ability to do that possibly allegedly is now being allowed to roam free yet if they'd have arrested him two days ago or three days ago okay and they could hold him for 28 days at the end of the 28 days if they're bailed then at least the public think well okay we've had four weeks of temporary protection you know and I think it's something worth just considering and there's been other stories that have been breaking and um, you know go back on the Wirral okay over the last couple of days right they, you know the Beechwood story right is starting to develop and they're trying to let some of it out the air out the balloon but they're not they don't really want to name the people that they're in, um, uh, arresting and they're keeping it close to their chest And on, you know, Burke and Egg and Beechwood, right, they, they arrested a man, 22, for possession with intent to supply Class B drugs, possession of Class B drugs, and possession of an offensive weapon. A great big, right, lunatic-looking, psychopathic, right, knife, right, where it's not a machete kind of knife. You know, what on earth would anyone want to own something like that is really beyond me. And they've been stepping up, okay, the action on the Beechwood. And who was the 22-year-old? Who do we know is 22? I mean, there's a few of them, isn't there? William Duggan. Jake Duffy, I think. Jake Robbo, you know, you know, there's lots of them. But they're, they're clamping down on the Ford Beechwood... Um, gang now whereas previously they were focusing on the wood church and people were making accusations that the ford beechwood firm got a free pass
And now that they're focusing on the Ford Beechwood firm, the wood ch um, they'll be accusing the Woodchurch of getting a free pass. But to be honest with you, right, I think there's been free passes handed out to, they've been handing them out like Smarties. They've been handing them out like bus tickets. Okay, and, you know, that is now the situation being rectified. Shock and awe Serena, the chief constable of Merseyside Police, has trimmed down the registered police informants list on Merseyside from over 300 down to less than 50. So now it's sink or swim now. And I think what we're going to start seeing going forward, we're either going to see people walking away from the graph or there's going to start being arrests and people are going to start being arrested and they won't be able to use the excuse, oh, well, I'm a registered police informant. No, that they ain't going to wear no more because what's happened is we all know that it's created, right, Frankenstein's monster. And some sad news from the Mount, the Mount Joy. Mountjoy Jail, okay, in Ireland, okay, there's a prisoner fighting for their life after being attacked by a group in his cell, lost so much blood, they thought that, um, that he was going to die, and he got to have his spleen removed, he's in hospital, mate the hospital or something. And on the murder of um, Christopher Malloy, Okay, right, Joseph Byrne and Jay Byrne were cleared of murder, but the 15-year-old was found guilty. All three of them are pleaded guilty to manslaughter earlier on, so they, when they get sentenced, that'll probably be next month. And, they, you know, the uh, video that have been doing the rounds for quite a while, okay, of a masked mob, okay, right, in County Clare, issuing threats and all this carry on brandishing weapons and a gunman um right you know blasts a parked car and that's in rathkill as well where they run into the um place and were shooting and all that carry on that ain't gonna end well we've also got right and um, good news actually river dance star michael flatley is on the mend he's out of hospital after having surgery for cancer. You know, and we'd like to wish him very well. I know he's got a very privileged life, but he's an extremely talented man. Okay, and like everyone, he may have his own flaws. I don't know the man personally. I don't really know much about him. All I know is that he'd done the river dance and the Lord of the Dance and all that. And, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it when I watched it on the video and that. He certainly contributed, you know, so he deserves to have the privileged life that he has in many ways and you know i wish him all the best and hope he you know manages to beat it and gets over it remission and all that carry on so sending best wishes to michael flatley i think he was born in chicago wasn't he or something but i remember all that river dance everyone was into it weren't they donkeys years ago doing the irish dancing lovely put irish culture on the uh, map and I know people can sort of laugh and all that carry on, but, you know, it's, it was good. It was nice. And a sinister story, right, broke yesterday, right? It was horrible, right? That nasty scumbag, Rio Jones, okay, right, who, who let rip with the firearm on the bike, okay, recklessly, and he shot the girl in the neck who was just standing at the bus stop, and he got a life term, life in jail with a minimum term of 16 and a half years. Okay, he's posting on um, Instagram already. Okay, he's in jail now for 16 and a half years doing a life sentence. Rio Jones, okay, he boasts it was me who shot up after he got short schoolgirl shot. Rio Jones was jailed for life with a minimum term of 16 and a half years for attempted murder last week. Posts have appeared on a gunman's Instagram page stating it was me who shot up a week after he was jailed for life for shooting an innocent schoolgirl. Rio Jones was handed a lifetime imprisonment with a minimum term of 16 and a half years on Tuesday last week after being found guilty of attempting to murder Shakir Watson, 
It came after a 15-year-old was struck in the neck by a stray bullet as the teenager discharged six gunshots as he pursued his rival gang member through the streets of Toxtiff on an electric bike. But late on Tuesday evening this week, a post appeared on what is believed to be the 19-year-old's Instagram page. This showed a picture of a male with his hood up and face covered. The caption alongside the hashtag free RJ HMP living Cate living and startup reads guess who's back RJ's back it was me who shot up new music coming very soon run this up so he into the drill music and all that so he's in jail serving life and he's going to be producing music videos okay, for his Instagram page and social media. It is not known whether Jones is responsible for the post or whether it was made by another person with access to the RJ from D DA8 side account, which seemed to have been inactive for more than a year previously. The photograph also appears to be of some age, having previously been posted on the same feed in November 2021 more than three months before the shooting. A further message on Jones's Instagram story reads, read, everyone respect to let everyone know and back and got loads of news. Stuff coming real soon. Another added, me and bro due to drop this next month, WYS alongside a clip of a music video. A trial at Liverpool Crown Court previously heard that Jones of Germain Street in Toxtiff was chasing Watson through the streets with both riding electric bikes shortly after 5 p.m. on March the 1st, 2022, when he fired six shots at extremely close proximity on Upper Warwick Street. One bullet struck the other rider with another hitting the 15-year-old who happened to be waiting at a bus stop just behind the target with a friend aged 14. She was rushed to Alderhay Children's Hospital after one of the bullets entered at the right-hand side of the back of her neck and exited via the chest area. Good grief. The youngster suffered lung damage and shattered vertebrae in the spine undergoing 10 days of treatment before being discharged. Meanwhile, Watson continued riding for a short distance before knocking on the door of a nearby house. The occupant drove the 20-year-old to Royal Liverpool Hospital after he was shot in the right arm requir requiring surgery after a bullet fractured a bone in his wrist. In the aftermath, Jones disposed of the gun, his bike and the clothes he had been wearing during the shooting. None of these items have been, since been recovered. The team was arrested at his home on March the 3rd with a search at a property revealing body armour in his bedroom. He claimed to, to have lost his phone during a visit to Sheffield the day after the shooting, replacing it with a new handset and number thereafter. Rio Jones said in his evidence that he had been stabbed, shot at and run over in a dispute between two groups of feuding former friends in the years leading up to the incident. This schism allegedly developed after an unnamed pal was murdered in 2017. After this, he and his family had been at, on the end of a series of attacks for which he believes someone in the other group of friends was responsible. These included an arson attack at his home on, in July, January 2019, six days before his dad's work van was set on fire. On November the 21st, 2019, a firearm was discharged outside Jones's address when he was not home. Ten 9mm casings were found in the road with nine bullet holes left in the front window. Jones was then stabbed on, on High Park Street on October the 24th, 2021. Being knifed in the chest and leg, 
as he and a female friend sat in a car. He suffered a small puncture wound to his upper thigh and a slash wound and a hand, but sustained no injuries to his torso as he was wearing body armour. Reef. The teenager said on the witness box that he had been stabbed twice prior to this. He also claims to have been chased with knives and guns while his mum's car had got smashed up. On another occasion, Jones was chased and hit by a car while walking his dog and suffered a broken foot. Shots were also fired when he and a group of his friends were being pursued through the streets. The teenager stated that he had been similarly tailed on the morning of the shooting in March 2022 and decided to retaliate by finding and pursuing a person from the other gang in order to warn his assailants off. Jones maintained that he had not intended to fire the gun and instead panicked when he, as he brandished the weapon. That's absurd. And all that nonsense he came out with in the trial, you know what I mean? I didn't mean to do it and, and all this stuff, right? Well, look, he's in jail, sentenced last week. Within a week, his Instagram's up and running, okay, promising more of that drill music, gangster stuff and all that game. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. You see? Feral young men, okay, with access to firearms, with access to a lot of money, okay, and no check on them. And the elders, okay, that are, that are egging them on and getting them to do this, they're the ones who are registered police informants, okay, and they've got a license to operate, and they've allowed this to get out of hand. But the police are fighting back, okay, and they're doing what they can to allow, you know, to let the public know they're making arrests as we speak and have been done for the last few days on the Beechwood, the Ford estate. So I'm going to try to keep you up to date with all that, and we'll come back today and we'll do our um, usual daily one at 7 o'clock this evening. Maybe a late one on Sheriff. We'll, we'll have to see. I've got a bad headache. I'm hoping that that'll be gone by later. But I will set up one for later on. And we can have, uh, we can discuss what's been going out, what else has dropped later on today, because it's literally only up past 12. So in the next seven hours, there'll be a few stuff that, you know, that, I, that, I, that I'll be dropping constantly, and I'll bring you up to date with that. But there are things happening on the Wirral. They are clamping down on the Beechwood. And this is just dropped, and I might as well bring you it, and I. Right, Andy. He man, okay. He is also a fan of of influencer Andrew Tate, the Liverpool-born middleweight MMA fighter, had previously hit the headlines after he was snapped with exiled crime boss Daniel Kinahan in Dubai. MMA fighter Darren Till has revealed that he is a fan of a of controversial online influencer Andrew Tate, adding, I don't think he's a bad person. Well, I suppose in the world of Darren Till, organized crime, drug dealing, perversion, and all that kind of stuff that they're all that, that they're all seem to be involved in, then I don't think he should find Andrew Tate, right, to be con um, a bad person because they are all down in the sewer together, dealing in drugs, organised criminality, perversion, human trafficking, sex trafficking, okay, money laundering and all that stuff. So you, it's only natural that Darren Till, being one of those kind of people, right, is going to be admiring of someone like Andrew Tate. I mean, me personally, they're two scumbags, okay, who deserve everything that's coming their way. The Liverpool-born middleweight MMA fighter had previously hit the headlines 
after he was snapped um, photographed with exiled crime boss Daniel Kinahan in Dubai. But now, in his latest interview, Till has also expressed his admiration for Andrew Tate, a self-described misogynist who is facing charges of organised crime, human trafficking and rape. Till, who once praised his friend Kinahan for his valuable advice, told how Tate had even inspired his UFC walk on music for his last fight with Jew Plessius in Jew Plessis in December 2022. The song Tourne Don Levy by French artist Indilla was the same music used in the viral internet videos of Andrew Tate. Speaking to Basketball Insiders, Darren Till revealed that it wasn't a coincidence he chose that Octagon Walk music. I know he's very controversial, he said of Tate, but I don't think he's a bad person and that theme tune for me is just sick. When I've seen some of the viral videos, I've just thought, yeah, that's a bit of me. I'm a fan of these, but not all of these views, and that's just the way the world works. Referring to Andrew Tate's recent arrest in Romania, Darrell insisted that he was innocent until proven guilty. I think your average person is getting more familiar with how the world works thanks to social media, he declared. But as the phrase goes, you're innocent until proven guilty, aren't you? I've been thinking about giving my opinion on Twitter, but I've got half a million followers. As soon as I give my opinion, you never know what the reaction might be, so I'll step back. If he is guilty, then obviously that's not good, but equally he might be innocent. Darren Till also said he believes it's the end for Conor McGregor who he acknowledged is still the biggest name in the sport. I think Connor has been there and done it, made his money and now he's happy. I'm sure he probably wants to come back, but deep down he knows life's different now. I think it's probably the end for Connor McGregor, but he's still the biggest name in the sport. In December 2021, Darren Till and gang boss Daniel Kinahan were pictured enjoying a late-night stroll together on a beach in Dubai. It was the second time Darren Till, who was represented by Kinahan's now-defunct MTK Global, posed images of Kinahan on his social media accounts. In March 2020, Darren Till shared a photograph on Twitter and launched a staunch defend defence of his friend Daniel Kinahan saying he had given he has given me more valuable advice as a friend anyone than anyone I have ever met in a professional capacity. In the December post, UFC fighter Darren Till, who has no involvement in crime that's being proved, but we all know he's up to his neck in it, described how Daniel Kinahan was still involved in boxing from his home in the Middle East. Darren Till wrote, good stroll on the beach tonight in Dubai with one of my good pals. Daniel Kinahan is advising Eddie Hearn and Al Heyman is advising Leonard Ellaby for Eddie Hearn and Leonard Ellaby to fight. Wow. Good luck, Eddie. I'm rooting for you, son. At the time, Kinahan, who is now the subject of sanctions by the US Treasury with a $5 million bounty on his head, appeared in a series of photographs with several boxers and other leading figures within the sport from his bolt hole in Dubai. However, his attempts to reinvent himself as a top sports promoter were widely seen as a cynical effort to sports wash his reputation in a bid to distance himself from his involvement in organised crime. So there we got it. Darren Till has come out and put his foot in it straight again. 
what what is the matter with these people? It's like Tyson Fury. Allegedly, right, he's been out in Dubai. Now, wouldn't you thought with all the controversy and that, right, the last place you want to be going is Dubai. And there's no good being arrogant and ego going, oh, go where I want. Oh, go where I want. I don't have to worry about, you know, the way it looks because I'm a big thicko. Okay, honestly, your PR people go, look, the worst place you need to go now is Dubai. Kinnahan's are still there. Okay, so just give it a little swerve and you can go somewhere else. But no, the arrogance, you see, and the ego, right, and the low IQ. Tyson Fury goes to Dubai. Stephen Gerrard goes to Dubai to see the new year in with Lee Byrne and his daughter Lily and his wife. Alex what, uh, Gerard, and no doubt Lee and Byrne was somewhere there as well. And no doubt there was Daniel Kinahan and the Kinahans. No doubt behind the scenes they had a meet up, a bit of dinner or, or something like that. But you see, in the end, it's the arrogance and the ego which will bring them, bring them all down. If Tyson Fury, with all the controversy over the last 12 months, as the heavyweight champion of the world, okay, right? Anyone with like more than one brain cell says you don't go anywhere near Dubai. It's only because of what it looks like. And the last photograph before they got sanctioned with the Kinnahans was Tyson Fury, right? Photograph with Daniel Kinnahan. So you'd have thought, you know what I mean? Why is he doing it? Is it just arrogance? And Darren Till as well. So I just wanted to bring you those things. You see, they're dropping as we're talking. And I'm hoping that the microphone's uh, all right. It seems to be all right. Seems to be working okay. I What I tend to do is when I start to load one up, I unplug it and then I plug it back in. And hopefully it means that the um, sound is going to be okay. So this is going to be Art Hostage episode, right? I think it's 580. Let's have a look. I think it really is. Yeah, we're closing in on 600 episodes. So Art Hostage episode 580. Okay, Thursday Musings. A precursor to the Daily Live. Art Hostage signing off.